Welcome back, my friends, for another fun reloading video. Today we're on episode 5 of our 357 Magnum series, and today we're continuing our work with Hodgdon H110 here using our 153 grain cast Lee bullets. As you can see, we're using the CCI 550 small Magnum pistol primers and our Lee 38 special die set that'll also work just as well for 357 Magnum. And this is our uh, arms core, I believe. I had stamped brass, we had sorted and trimmed and uniformed everything back in episode one and two. So here this will be the third firing on this brass and it's all looking good. And so here's where we ended up at the end of the last video here with H110. We had 16 grains and these were all the ones that made it on the paper. I think it says 25 shots on target. And what we're gonna end up doing is I'm gonna load up 10 rounds at 15.7 and 10 rounds at 16.3. And we're gonna see if this group will either tighten up or our point of impact will shift into our point of aim there before we adjust our sights at all at least. But we have the same brass, same bullets, same powder. And again, I'm just gonna be loading up 10 with a lower charge and 10 with a higher charge. And we'll see if our um, spreads and deviations want to tighten up at all as well. Maybe if the uh, H110 fireball increases or decreases, we'll be able to see that perhaps. But anyways, let's get to it. We're going to start dumping some powder. So we've got our angry sand or our H110 here in the uh, trickler. We're just doing the old uh, scoopy into the thing and trickling up. And we're just finishing up our first 10 here of 15.7. So yeah, that's our last one here of 15.7. I went ahead and wrote it on all the cases. It'll probably come off when it fires, but I'll be able to tell for now. And of course, our case fill, we'll just check all those. We're not gonna see tenths of a grain in difference, but we can see that they are all charged and they're all about, you know, roughly the same. We're not gonna blow anything up with this charge at least. And we've got our seating die here already set up with our dummy round we made in the previous video. So all we have to do is start seating these bullets and we'll check on the first one and see how that looks. But we should be good to go. Again, we're already flared, already primed. We've got powder. I might come down just a hair so when we crimp we end up right in that groove but otherwise we look pretty good here. Let me try a couple more and we'll fine tune our seating depth as we go. Yeah, so I'm just gonna come down just a hair, just barely breathe on the seating stem as we go through these. And we'll work our way through them. And then we'll just run them all once more once we're dialed in to make sure we're all seated uniformly. Yeah, looking better already. But we'll just barely inch down on this as we go. And we'll probably be good with this one here. There we go. So there we are on our fourth one. I'll go ahead and just touch these last ones to get them caught up. It is all. Excellent. And I'll just get these other six done here, and then we'll start pouring powder for our 16.3 grain charges. Spelling them everywhere. That's not the best container to hold your loose bullets in, but it'll work for now. All right, so we've got these 10 all seated. I'll go ahead and turn our block around and we'll start pouring powder for our 16.3 grain charge and then we'll seat those and then crimp everything all at once and be done here in the reloading room. 
We're just trickling up our very last charge here with 16.3 grains. And then we'll do our little drive-by checking on our powder. We'll get them all seated. And we'll be ready for the range after a nice little crimping. All right, that looks good there. 16.3 coming right up. My pan's being really staticky today for whatever reason. So I'm having to give it some extra shakes there. But no big deal. And again, we can check all of our cases real quick. Yeah, they look like they have powder, I'll tell you what. And we might be just touching the bottom of the bullet here with the powder finally. So I don't know if I'm gonna be going any higher of a charge than this, but we're gonna see what happens and whether or not uh, our accuracy will increase, decrease, move around on the paper or what. But oh well, kind of a fun little test here. So we've got 10 rounds, time to seat them up. So I went ahead and you know got the bullets started on here so I'm not fidgeting around with them on the press. Very nice. And once again, seated right up to that groove. And actually, I, when I shake it, I can still barely hear a little bit of powder moving. So we're getting right up next to it. But we'll have to see what our pressure signs look like. We'll have to see how the gun reacts, all that fun stuff. See how the chronograph results kind of sway our decision to pick one load over the other. But we should be getting her dialed in, I'll tell you what. I went with the dark blue here. Well, the blue and the red, because you know red means hot. Just a visual indicator for myself at the range to know which loads I'm using. And we got the white and blue on the first set there with the uh, weaker charge. But also I wrote on the case, like I mentioned previously, so there's no way to mix them up here, even if I drop them everywhere. And even if they fall in some water and the marker comes off, I have a visual indicator of the bullet itself. They are the same bullet, just powder coated in two different batches. Cast from the same pot during the same casting session. So yeah, aside from the colors, they are the exact same. Time to get our crimping dial set up and let's get on with it. We've got our crimp die set up with a uh, you know medium healthy crimp there just so we don't have any setback from recoil and to possibly aid with a more consistent ignition. So that combined with our magnum primers should be setting off all of our H110. But who knows? It's uh, one of those harder to light patterns and it does like being near a full case. So with our 16.3 grain charge here, I'm hoping that'll be just the perfect number. And maybe our chronograph results will really tighten up. But only time will tell. So there's our first 10. Sorry, I guess that's our last 10. And we'll just knock these out here. Very smooth, no issues at all. And you can actually really feel the ring on the crimp die squeezing down the body before it even gets up to the crimping portion, which is a nice feature if you're unfamiliar with that. There's a carbide ring inside the bottom of the die and it just helps straighten out the body for more uniformity before it hits the crimping portion. Oh, they're just beautiful. I love this little robin's egg sort of pattern we came up with, but I'll never be able to duplicate it, but it was just kind of fun. Anyways, let's get packed up. We'll head out to the range. Let's take some shots and see what happens. And just like that, we are back from the range. We've got a target to check out. We've got some chronograph data to go over. We can inspect our brass here and let's get into it. 
So we're gonna start with our target here, and this was 15.7 grains of H110. We've still got this high and left pattern. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then our 10th shot was just off of the target right up here. So our group, that's still roughly, you know, five or six inches at 15 yards. Not super impressive. And we can take a look at our chronograph data here with 15.7 grains, 10 shots averaged 1263. We had an extreme spread of 111 and a standard deviation of 31 feet per second. I also noted lots of unburnt powder, medium recoil, which is what we expected because I've already tested 16 grains in an earlier episode here. And a look at our brass, the 10 shots we had, we can see flattening of the primers. However, we also saw this in our 16 grain charge, but it's not um, the flattest of primers really. We still have an outer edge here that hasn't completely flown over. There's no cratering. So I believe that this is still a safe charge. There was a little bit of unburnt powder, like I said, but it was a pretty clean burning um, load. Just to look at a few cases there. Overall, not maximum pressure. However, accuracy was lacking and our uh, spreads and deviations are still not quite that great. However, our next 10 shots were up at 16.3 grains of H110. And we can see here our group, while still not the greatest and now a little bit high instead of high left, it is quite an improvement from our other charges previous to this one. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 there. And this here is only maybe three and a half or four inches instead of five or six from our other target up top here. And to look at our chronograph data, we only got six shots on this because I, uh, you know, butt dialed my phone and turned it off so it wasn't capturing the Bluetooth data. But out of six shots, we had an average of 1306 and a standard deviation of 24 feet per second. I had noted here that it was very snappy harder to put back on target, and the report changed from bang to a crack. What I mean by report, you know, that's the sound the gun makes. And it went more from a boom to a ka. If you know what I'm saying, that probably makes no sense, but you might have heard something similar to that. I don't know if anyone actually notes the sounds it makes uh, when they're loading. Is it supposed to change sound? Eh? And lastly, we'll take a look at the primers. This third and fourth row here, we can see our primers right next to the others, and they're still just about the same amount of flatness. Still no cratering, which this gun might not do. It might just skip that and completely blow up, but it was uh, more clean burning. There was no unburnt powder like previously mentioned. I think we're actually getting a full burn with the H110, and it's actually performing a little bit better as we could have seen in our spreads and deviations here. So maybe if we got all 10 shots, it would have opened up and the data would have looked similar, but it does actually look like our higher, possibly barely compressed charge of H110 might have performed better than one with a loose case. And perhaps our next step here is gonna to be to confirm this load, 1300 feet per second for a 161 grain bullet is pretty impressive, I think, with a four inch barrel. So I'm pretty happy with these results. So we're gonna try 16.3 again, and I think we kinda have something we can work with here. Anyways, if you guys enjoy this sort of content, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button for me. Go and check me out over on Instagram as well. That is Dummy Round Official. So thanks again for hanging out. We will see you in the next video. Have a good one.